Test the season for 3D printed ornaments. Greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma, and today's episode, we're gonna talk about 3D printed ornaments. And I'm gonna share four techniques I've used for hanging my ornaments, and three techniques I've used for figuring out the balance of my ornaments. Some of these items may be common knowledge. Um, maybe all of them is common knowledge. Uh, if that is the case, hopefully just taking these few minutes to talk about ornaments and you know just see what I've done helps uh, fuel some inspiration for you and your 3D printed ornaments. When you make an ornament, uh, you wanna give it some kind of mechanism to hang. And I've done four approaches. Uh, the first is the most intuitive and also the easiest, which is simply just poke a hole in in your design uh, for a ribbon or a hook. I've done this technique with customized snowflakes for a church, um, customized ornaments for the jiu-jitsu uh, place that my uh, sons go to. Uh, maybe we can even count the Mobius wreath as this kind of technique because, hey, it has a big hole and a ribbon in it. If this is the approach that you want to take and you just want to get started with dimensions, uh, when I'm using a 1 8 inch ribbon, the hole that I use is 3.5 millimeters in diameter. If you watch some of my older videos, you are aware I do a lot of filament switches to get different colors. You can see that reflected in a lot of my bird or insect ornaments. With those ornaments, uh, for many years, my main approach was to print two of them. I'd print two mirror images and uh, so they'd fit back to back. And then I would glue them together with a ribbon. Now, as long as your design does not include text, uh, you do not have to do this mirroring in the 3D modeling software. Uh, you can just pull it into your slicer like Cura or Simplify 3D and just duplicate the model so you have two of them and then just use the mirror uh, operation to flip them back to back. Now, if you are doing text on your ornament, uh, like I do with the Samoyeds, I do a lot of customization, personalization of the Samoyed dogs. Uh, if you are putting a dog's name on the ornament, then I do recommend flipping it in your 3D modeling software. So in the case of the Samoyed, I uh, flipped the dog over, mirrored it uh, in Blender, and then I put the text on. Because otherwise, when you mirror it, all of a sudden your text is mirrored as well. You may have also seen the video on the tour of my 3D printed houses. Those I've made into ornaments as well. And if you look at them, you're gonna see an identical element in all of them. So take a look at Occoquan's Millhouse Museum or Occoquan's Rockledge Mansion, Quantico, Virginia's National Museum of the United States Marine Corps, or Jekyll Island, Georgia's Cherokee Cottage. All of those have the exact piece at the top, the exact same. It's, um, I made it once, it proved itself, so I just move it from project to project. If you want to steal the dimensions of my 3D printed hook, it's just two cylinders, uh, one subtracted from the other. The outside cylinder is 10.374 millimeters in diameter, and it's three millimeters thick. And then the inside cylinder that we're subtracting is six millimeters in diameter. So if you're looking at the final piece, uh, the ring itself is about two millimeters thick, and then the depth is three millimeters thick. Now I have my nice little 3D printed hook, which is great, but it's kind of chunky and it doesn't lend itself to every design. Um, sometimes with 3D printing, we have to make things thicker than we would uh, to get that strength that we would from metal. So another technique for hanging that I've been doing is embedding in split rings. With the gazebo at the tippy top, uh, what I do there is I just subtracted a small little cylinder at the top uh, that gives a, a little peak on either side to support my split ring that I put in. It's like a little cradle, the split ring slides in, and I just put a couple little drops of glue to solidify it. In my ongoing effort to get away from glue, I've also been doing um, where my print uh, pauses and I'll put the split rings inside the piece. I leave like a little hole for them and then I continue the print. Uh, this isn't a big leap for me because I'm already doing a lot of multiple processes for the color changes. It's just one additional process for me to go in and lay the split ring. Now, regardless what approach you use to hang, your uh, 3D printed ornament, uh, we also have to think about balance. If you have something that's symmetrical like a snowflake or a gazebo or a butterfly, 
easy peasy. You have a really good idea of where the middle of your object is and where everything can be balanced. If you have something that's a little more challenging, uh, like maybe the Samoyed or, you know, like the service dog or whatnot, or even like a 3D printed house, uh, here are some techniques that I've used for balancing. As you may know, um, my main 3D modeling software that I use is Blender, and it has a tool in it that I use to get a good idea of where my center of gravity is going to be. Uh, you can take advantage of this as well if your 3D modeling software does not have a similar capability. Uh, Blender, you can import in an STL file, and it doesn't care where that STL file comes from. So when you have an object in Blender, uh, you may see that you have location coordinates. Well, if it's a 3D object, where is this location coming from? Is it the left? Is it the right? Is the middle? Blender tells you where the origin of your object is, where that coordinates is going to be, um, by giving you a little yellow dot. We have the capability to change uh, what's considered our object origin, which I use profusely. It's helpful in many, many arenas. In this case, it's very helpful for giving me a guideline of where the center of my object may be. So what I do is I have my object, I select it, and then I go to the object menu and I go to set origin and I pick center of mass volume and it changes where my little yellow dot is and you can also see my coordinates change as well and that gives me an idea of where Blender may think my balance of my object is. Once I know where my center of gravity is, uh, that's where I can put uh, my 3D printed hook, that's where I can leave a hole, that's where I can put my split ring or if I'm gluing, gluing things back to back, I know where I need to put my ribbon. One technique I've done with some of my 3D printed buildings is I simply just add a base, a symmetrical base at the bottom. And this just kind of evens out the weight distribution, gives me like a solid predictable foundation. And a side benefit of this approach is now you have a nice little area where you can put text and customize the object. Now there's going to be times where you aesthetically don't want to add a base to your piece and you're looking at that center mass and you can see you have a challenge ahead for you. Uh, an example I have is Jekyll Island's Cherokee Cottage. Uh, there's a addition to the house that's just on the back left side. And so naturally if this ornament, we didn't want to add a base to it, it's going to hang kind of tilted backwards and to the left. So the hack I used in this situation, I got from the East Coast Rip Rap Festival and the 3D printed Derby. If you watch that video, you'll recall that I wanted my car to weigh as much as possible. So, you know, like right at the top of the weight limit so it'd go as fast as possible. In that case, I left a hole in my piece so I could fill it with pennies and weigh it down. That's what I did with the Cherokee Cottage. I, I left a hidden cavity in my piece to fill with a counterweight. So I printed the Cherokee Cottage in two pieces. I have the house and then the roof. Uh, the house left a little cylinder hole where I could fill with pennies. With how many pennies, I don't really have a very scientific approach. That was more good old trial and error. I believe at the time I used uh, some packing tape to attach the roof to the house itself so I could get an idea of how it would hang. And then I would just incorporate more and more pennies uh, into my little hole to see how many I needed. What I can tell you is if you want to fill an ornament with pennies, the diameter that I use for penny holes is 20.5 millimeters. All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching. Hopefully some of this is useful, but at the very least, I hope it gets your gears turning for some 3D printed ornaments you want to make. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.